Hey guys, King here. Um, sorry if there's noise in the background, but it's Saturday. So I wanted to do something kind of different for everybody, maybe something more needed. But I want to review all of the um, higher time frame doji alerts that went off on the NASDAQ and ES market. Um, be good for all of us so that we can see, I guess, the classical setup. And we could also see with the Fib fan the setup for the doji. And uh, maybe we could learn something. So it would be good to look over them and maybe take note of some of the best setups. But it will be fun just to see what dojis we had um, based off of time frames. So we'll look back on the 9th. That's the first thing. Let me make sure I'm recording here too. And we are, yep. So the first um, setup is gonna be October 9th, right? It's Monday. Um, I'm not gonna take in consideration where we're at, where we're at on the daily chart. Uh, I'm not gonna set up any like crazy fibs. I just wanna see um, together um, the higher time frame dojis that went off. I would do the lower time frames, but um, there's a lot more just battling that we'll have to do with and it's just easier to go over the higher time frames since they happen a lot faster. So here's an NASDAQ and these ones are happening overnight, overnight because it's 2.30, these are Pacific times. And then the ones that you get on Monday is going to be a 460 and a 230 right at 6.20 before market open. We're also going to take note on the 9 o'clock, okay? So let's go look here um, before 9 o'clock for that doji. So let's look at the 2.30. On Nasdaq. Let me go to the daily chart and we'll review and we'll talk about this indicator over here. Maybe it might help us with our review so we won't say anything until we start reviewing. But here is Monday's candle and we're gonna go look at that. Let's go look at the 460. So Right here on the 460 before market opens, 620, we have this hammer here. And both of these are kind of bearish, which is pretty interesting. So this is looking for um, a bearish trend down, if we were to look at it. But um, let's look at that one. So it's 460 and let's look at, two, oops, let's look at the 230 minute. Let's see what that one is. This one is green and then the doji is a red hammer. It's actually pretty interesting here. It's a 3-1 and they end up going three bar, but let's go look at this 230 minute. And what I wanna do here is set up um, the classical. Let's throw on the profit targets. Number four, profit targets. So, Right before market opens, this is the old style of how we were getting into the trades. And it's breaking south, comes down to price target one, and gets bought back up. One, two, and three price targets. And if we just look at this um, from the band, it's about 21 to about 36 to about 48. And then um, symmetrical on the same sides. So those are about like, I think the biggest one was what? Oh, actually, no. This is interesting. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that makes sense. So pretty much the risk to reward was to the downside on this trade, like the best. Because from entry here to here, it was about 60 points. And the other one was about, I think, 21, if I remember. Yeah, around like 21, 22. So it's actually really, really interesting that this trade um, had it skewed to the downside for um, you know the good trade. But let's go look at market open um, to see what that would have looked like, like on the five minute. So we're looking at 620. So 620, we end up getting you long when the alert goes off, fails, stops you out. We come all the way down to PT1. And then they buy the dip for a mean reversion trade back to the stop loss at the red. Boom. PT2 is working. And now it's bouncing around. And then now we rejected it. So stop out. And then you're short. 
stomp out. And it's actually not too bad. Stop out, and then it runs back up PT1, PT2, we sell off. And then we go back into the short, stomp out, short, and then you're going to get stomped out again. And then that's that was like the whole day for it, right? So that was a 230. But let's go see what the fib fan would have looked like on that trade, um, setting up the way I've been trying to teach people. So it's interesting because the other one was red and this one was green. Let me turn off the strat so we can see the colors. So if we look here, this was a green auction. So this is a bull flag right here. So if we were to set up the um, fibs, here is optimal dip buy entry for the bull flag to play out. So let's look at the five minute. So 620, uh, 620, right? So we sell off into the optimal um, dip buy. And if you look here, this is typically how I'm looking to take these trades. So if I was to buy the dip right here, I'd be setting a stop at the other blue. So this would be about 12 points. Same thing again. Um, I'd be wanting to risk 12 points because if I can, if I can get stopped out, at least I'm looking forward to go up to the upper band. So I'm only, I'm risking about 12 points to make about 70, which isn't bad risk reward. Uh, what is that? 12, four. So yeah, almost like a three, like a uh, four R almost. Yeah, pretty much almost like a four R um, risk reward trade. And then we're chopping around at this upper band. You can catch another short once we start breaking down a little bit of a triangle here and we break down and you can take this trade you know you got an imbalance here and all that nonsense you could take profits um you can, i mean if you look right here here's your two down and here's your two up look at where they're buying it two up boom 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 so there's there's some there's some play with that doji trade um for that um 230 but the thing is the 230 doesn't close until 10 10 which is about over here so this was always kind of looking for that bull flag to stay working, you know, to go up higher. But whatever, you missed that doji. Uh, so we get to see some of the workings. Um, typically, when I'm, like I said, when I'm trading the dojis with these flag setups, I'm typically looking for um, this blue zone more than anything. Because I sent you guys two other fibs to look at, which was this one and the flag. I prefer to have less levels just because it helps me um, just um, know where my risk is at better. And I can use that. I'm not that I can manage my risk better, but I can use the candle structure for what I need to risk on the trade and have less decisions to be reactive. So if we look here at 620, you're in the long because they're breaking S2, but then it loses it. So now it's becoming a short, which is fine, which is why I have these two levels. Short here, set your stop. Long here, set your stop. Boom, boom, boom. We sell off. We break to 0.5, but this is now in the optimal dip by entry because it's a bull flag based on the high to the low. And then it gets bought back up. Long here, set your stop, pushes up, hits your price target. It should be trying to break out, but it can't. It sells off. Use this wick, use this wick, use this wick as your stop loss. You know, we're coming into here. So if you want to take um, the dip buy, stop here. But that didn't work, so now you're out. So just another way to review it. But like I said, um, always adjust to whatever you want to do you don't have to use any of these numbers like if you like this zone area you can adjust these numbers to be a little bit wider if you want to or a little bit tighter um the numbers uh, i don't know if i posted these ones but if you want a screenshot here are the numbers for this fan based on that doji setup but that was that doji okay um classical model wasn't too bad for the 230 just very fast price action and now that same day, we ended up getting 120 minutes. So right at seven o'clock my time, there's this hammer right here. And I think there was also a four hour hammer that went off if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I guess it wasn't that day. It must've been deja vu. But anyways, now you got 120 minute. Let's go look at this one using the classical model. Remember higher time frames. Here's entry. And I'm also going to set up the fan at the same time. So I want to go back. Remember, this is bullish. So this is um, high to low because the candle was green. And we want to see if we could break out of this. Because if we do, we unlock the bonus round to go higher, like irrationally higher. So there's that. And then let's go look at the um, price targets. And if you have the indicator um, that I, I built for you guys, any doji that you're watching, it's already going to do this, the entry and the price targets. 
All right, so we'll go to the five minute at seven o'clock. Wait, am I tripping? Seven o'clock? Yeah, right here. So right here, seven o'clock, we break up and then we sell off. So now you can go short. Dun, 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 dun. Here's the dip by opportunity, long here, set your stop. Pushes, stopped out, gets you in the long. Comes back around. If you didn't push your stop up, your stop, if you're long here, it's about right here. You're getting stopped out. So now it's just chopping. And I would be using, like if I was using this flag, I'd be using something like this as my way to gauge my entry. I'd be looking for prices to end up breaking over. So I can now take my long here, set my stop here, and then ride this trade all the way up to the gold. But if you're short, using the classical model, you're just looking for this to continue to break down to go down to PT1. Fortunately, it's not. Most likely we took out the doji candle low, maybe. Seems like probably we did. Wait, was that at seven? I might be tripping, give me a second. So let me double check. Pretty sure it is. Nine o'clock. That's exactly why. Perfect. I'm like, this is tracing price too much. Nine o'clock, so where's nine? Nine o'clock is right here. I'm more narrating a candle that I already came from. So nine o'clock is right here. Let's just say they got too long. They stopped you out. They got you short. They stopped you out. And then now we're pushing up. Stop loss here or at the bottom blue. It's pushing up. We just hit the golden band. So I want this to break up. I'd most likely be trailing my stop if I was long somewhere into this candle because I need this to break. We need it to break. If it does, we unlock all the other levels. Okay, it sells off. So if you wanted to go short, you take the short. I'm pretty sure I took the short here if I remember. And then they buy the dip here. But if you did the classical model, you went short, stopped out, long, stopped out. And then they're pushing it back. It gets you long, just using the classical model because we're not touching the lower blue. This is a bull flag. We're looking for this golden zone to break out. If we break out of the golden zone, it's also that point of interest is right here too. We break over that golden zone, it's game over to rally to your higher price target levels, liquidity levels. PT1, PT2, PT3, this thing pushed. So that's why sometimes when I'm looking at hammers and shooters in a higher time frame, I really wanna make sure that we're breaking over this broad information because then I feel more comfortable that this is just gonna run um, much more violently than I expected. So I'm always trying to pay attention if I need to be heavier in my position when we get to this broadening um, top here. So that was that one. Wasn't a bad trade. Um, really, really good. If you had the bullish bias, you got long, stopped out once, got long, stopped out a second time, and then you got long and then trades end up pushing. So these stop losses aren't that bad because if you're just using the blue to the red, um, you're taking paper cuts for like five bucks, like five points, I mean. So like for a mini, that's only like a uh, hundred dollars. And for half the size, 50 bucks. So it's not a bad trade because um, the long is working. And if you did take that long for the first run, um, you got at least 40 points on that one, um, on that trade. So it's not a bad trade. And then once you got in here, you got stopped out, lost it. And then again, you're getting that 39 points and and more to go higher on the liquidity we even hit price target three which is over like you know 90 points end of day probably runs like 120 uh 148 ish 115 so that's a crazy trade which is why like, like i said i'm very very like more important to this that's why i created this gaussian curve let me um get rid of these and if you look here this is important to me so that's why it's on my chart and the blue is important to me. That's why I have it on my chart. I, I use these because they have critical points of information for me um, when it comes to these trades. Um, let me give you an example why. Um, if you look here to this swing low, if we come back into the blue, we might catch a dip by opportunities just based off a low and a higher low to see if we get the new low, higher low, right? And that's why these blues are so critical for me. Very, very critical. Same thing with um, this downtrend here. I'm trying to teach you something that I'm also working on myself. You know, always gotta 
be better and grow. Swing high, swing low. I mean, um, swing high to new lower high. As long as we break over this blue, I want to take the long. Use the other blues and we stop. Long, stop, long, boom. Rise right up to here. What happens if we break this? Yeah, anything. Um, okay, so there was that doji on Monday. Um, the 230, the 460, the 120. And then that's kind of it for that day. We didn't have any more dojis after that. So you had about two opportunities for the day to get into some trades, at least over 40 points. And we saw one run over 90. So really, really good trades. Low risk reward, which is why I'm always paying attention. Now let's go look at Tuesday. These are all happening overnight, Asia session. And then we're getting into the morning. So 10 o'clock, so 10, October 10th. Let's go look. Nighttime, I'm asleep, I'm asleep. And then here's this one. That's what I probably remember. Here's this one. A four hour doji at 7 a.m. So your first alert, your first higher time frame alert, 7 a.m. So there's been nothing for you to do since market open, which is great. So let's go look at Tuesday. Seven a.m. So get two more candles. All right. Here's that hammer that went off. Okay. This was green. So this is a bull flag doji. Okay. That's what we're assuming from swing high to swing low. Okay. Now let's go look at the classical. Okay. Let's go look at our price targets. <laughs> this one's crazy. Tell you when you break this gold, it gets crazy. And then um, here's the classical doji entry. Kind of sucks because they're so wide and you're so close to PT1. Um, but here's the classical entry if you don't want to use the price action. So, uh, 7 o'clock. Let's look at the 5 minute. That's 7 o'clock. Here's your 7 o'clock candle. We broke over the golden zone. We hit PT1. Sells off. Breaks the broadening so you can take the short. Okay. All right, looks like it's working. If you're long, this is your stop loss. Let's go see how big how big the stop loss is on this trade. This one's about 22 points. It never gets hit, but you do take that drawdown. So 22 points, that's that's quite a bit. That's over like 400, let's just say like 480 um, with a NASDAQ contract. 22 times 20, yeah, it's about $440. Let's just round it up to 250. So that's a 250 stop loss, but if you're risking half a point, that's only $220. I mean, half of a mini, which isn't bad. Um, but either way, as soon as you took the trigger, they already gave you your first price target, which here to here was about 12 points, not bad. And if you waited for this to break over, um, you could have taken that trade, but this is your stop loss on this candlestick on the five minutes. So it's a pretty big ATR here on this push. So it's kind of tough, but using the classical model, you never got stopped and you're in the long. Using the broadening of that bull flag, you did get long, but you're stopped out. They get you long and you haven't really been stopped out because that big of a stop loss. You're being pushed up, breaking over PT1. And my eyes are more, more important on this gold line because I want this to hold because prices can go to the higher liquidity. We end up pushing to PT2 to PT3 and higher and higher and higher and higher. This thing ran, dude. This thing has some legs. This I think this one this one went up to my second um, daily price target, which is why I always have the daily levels on. But this one ran tremendously well. 129 points for the four hour doji. That is awesome. Like, that is awesome. <laughs> So let's see if there's any dojis um, that same day. Okay, check this out. 90, um, you got your first alert at seven and then at 11, what? Really? Let's go look. This is interesting. Maybe we read that wrong. Let's go look. Here's your, oh, what? Oh, that's crazy. So we had this alert at seven and then we had a, the another alert at 11 because this was a, a hammer counter shooter. 
but I mean, it's gonna be rough taking this one because we're now we're, we're stuck in the range. So you can see um, you end up stuck. So this wasn't gonna be a good trade regardless. Um, we can go look, look at here. Not even touching the fan because it was a bull flag and classical model. I'm sure your entries would have been <laughs> all the way up here. So for this whole session, you didn't catch nothing. So you wouldn't have been able to take that alert. So the only good alert would have been that seven then 11 o'clock, which is consolidating. But then they gave you another one at the, 90, the 92. For me, it's already 1228. So the market's been running. I only have 30 minutes left. Typically when it becomes 12 o'clock, I don't want to be a participant in the market anymore. And I'd rather just walk away because if I hurt myself, I only have about an hour to make up any hurt or pain that I might find myself in with the market. But we can go look at that 92 doji before the market closes. See if it was anything worth it. Here was the 92 and it wasn't really anything worth it because we're just making a triangle. So this is kind of why I don't really take any alerts, um, you know, towards the last hour of the day. It's not worth it. All right, so only really good alert was this one. And that was the only trade you really needed. And you could have done more discretionary trades around levels, but this was a systematic setup for Tuesday. Let's go look at um, the next day, the 11th. I'm asleep, so I don't care. The only alerts that are relevant here is the 620 in the morning. So it's the 92 and the 115. Typically, I would look at this, but the 92 is also a good time frame. But this does have more precedence. So we'll look at this one and analyze that one as well. And then we have another one at 9 o'clock. So, so pretty much we had two higher time frame set up. So if you think about it, each day has been giving you two higher time frame alerts. Um, so on average, let's just say you have one and a half chance of having a setup per day. So let's go look here at the 115. I'm going to go to the daily just so we can skip to the next candle. So that was Tuesdays. Let's go look at Wednesdays. Here's Wednesdays. And we got to look at the 115 at 620. Here it is. This is green, so it's a bull flag. And we gotta figure out how to take this candle. First thing that's important is where's our price targets, right? So we know where things might get liquidated. And then here is the classical doji entry, just so we can have those eyes on for the people who are new. Take the long, take the stop, take the short, take the stop. And then now we gotta do, um, for the people who want to use the flag, here is the flag, okay? And now 620, so we gotta go look at the five minute. Jesus Christ, this was awesome. So, <clears throat> based off the classical model, 620, nothing gets triggered at 620. Well, right in the morning, here's your long trigger, here's your stop loss, how many points is that? Just so we know, 16 points. So we don't want to take a lot of those. Boom, we hit PT1, pushes up, PT2, sells off and closes. Now, you broke over the gold, so I'm happy about that. So here's 19 points, and then here's 36 points. Not bad for one trade for the day. Now, let's see what happens on the downside. You got stopped out, so if you need to take profits, like Nasdaq does, it will slap you in the face. But if you wanted to use the break of this broadening, you could take this broadening and ride it all the way to the 0.5, that's where everyone's getting stopped out, or the short entry. That's about 43 points of a trade being discretionary using your levels. Now, if you went short, you hadn't got stopped out yet, so it works. Stopped out, short, stopped out, Short, stopped out, so about three stop losses if you kept using this trigger on the 115 because it doesn't close till 815. You got you in the long, PT1, almost to PT2, so 50% of this wick could be a price target here, 50% of this range could be a price target here, and then it ends up selling off. Now, it's 815, so that doji setup is over. But let's look at the 92. Maybe the 92 would have been a lot better, maybe cl tighter, closer. 
it's the same time at um at um 620 still bullish so here's the bull flag and here's the entry it's a lot tighter than the other one which isn't bad and then we'll go to the five minute we get the price targets on too Okay, and then let's look at the five minute. Sorry if this is slow, but it's a longer video. Let me um, hook up my charger here. Before my laptop ends up screaming for battery juice. So it's 620. We saw price action was very choppy, but let's see what happens here. All right, so back to 92, sorry, my son came in. Okay, so we go in the long. And let's just see how much um, this one's gonna cost us for a stop loss. I also have a banana, so sorry if you hear me chewing. So rather than the 16, you're only paying about 11, 11 points of a stop, so not bad. And if we look, risk reward, we're getting about 26 and 43. Not bad. And it sells off from these so that you get to double um, <laughs> your profits. We push back down. Now it's just really chopping around. It's starting to make a flag type look. But you also have this downturn. But not bad. Um, what's cool is this one never really worked as a short. It was always going to be a long. And the reason being was, like I said, we were still in that bull flag nature. It's unfortunate we didn't get to touch the discount. But this was going to be the discount of that um, candlestick anyways. It is what it is. But... After doing a lot of this, I wish I wouldn't touch it no more. And I would have to for sure draw like flags or broad informations, whatever, to get me out of, to take the trade out of here <laughs> to go back up. Um, but great short trade discretionary at these yellows. Gets you convinced to the reversal, convinced to the reversal after liquidating at price target. So not bad. Really just cleans it up. Not bad at all. Okay. No. Let's go look at um, the next alert. Did we get another, another alert? Did we get a better alert? Let's ask that question. Yep. If you didn't like the price action here, well, guess what? You get a 120 minute alert. And this one's not bad because 12 o'clock. So this is like, either this is gonna go or it's not. And so this one's not bad because you can use about 20 minutes and then call it a day after that. But let's go look at the 120 at nine o'clock. So you got three opportunities on, um, what is this, Wednesday? Not bad. Not bad. What time was it? Nine o'clock. So this alert right here. Here's the alert. That's sick. And it was a bear flag. Mm -mm -mm. Price targets. It's always important to know. And then that all oh, classical worked great on that on that one. Oh, let me yeah, I'm turn back on the magnet tool. Ooh, that was perfect. I'm putting on the entries. And we'll throw on the um, brown information flag, whatever. So because it's a bear flag, we go from low to high. Oh, that was perfect. It's really at 9 o'clock. Right here we get you in the trigger two down well from the to the body we get you in the short let's go measure the stop loss mm, 21 points let's just say 20 let's just say 20.5 big stop loss which is why it's always good to be sized down for any of these higher time frame dojis um to get confirmation that it's going to be like the trade which is like why i like the gold but anyways we come down it's still working, still working. And then we hit PT1. It's not a bad trade at all. Uh, from here to here was about a 40, let's just say 42 point trade because it went down a little bit lower. That's a great, great, great um, trade right there. The answer is a two to one, pretty much. No, it was a, um, yeah, it was a two to one. You doubled what you were gonna risk right here, which isn't a bad trade at all. 
and the price action was just really sloppy trying to get there but watching that higher time frame um range like that's why it's still good to have the classical model you can see that it wasn't gonna reverse it kind of looks like you're here with this like triangle or this like some square flag but it didn't and then you have this really nice trend line here because the price has moved pretty quick and once we hit pt1 you can see it was gonna mean revert um back up what's cool is sometimes i see this happen a lot where it'll come back into the entry so you can get another short but typically I take those for scalps because I'm like, I don't want to uh, chance it. Um, okay, so there was that one at nine and then we had that three hour. So let's go look at what happened at 12 o'clock. Really curious to see what the three hour looked like. Okay, here's the three hour. Oh, baddie. This one's like a shooter counter hammer. And let's go throw on the classical. Oh, that, that was gorgeous. All right. For sure, this thing took out. Here's the interesting part. Because this has like a strat reversal type setup, no matter where we're going on PT1 and PT2 off the doji, this is more of uh, the objective for the reversal trade back up. If we're gonna reverse back up, that hammer could, that hammer could fail. That could, that could be an easily failed hammer. You know, it's like a shooter disguise, but. Anyways, that would be important, but we'll still go through on our price targets. I'm pretty sure it still lines up. Mm -mm -mm. Here's price targets. And we'll go throw on the um, the fan. So it's bearish, so swing high. I mean, swing low to swing high. Okay. Remember, this is the optimal bear entry. So if you did want to go short, I mean, you could do it, but just make sure you got your stop loss and you know where you're going short. So that one, it starts at 12 o'clock. Where's 12? 12 is right here. So you did get stopped out. And like I said, this was the optimal <laughs> bearish entry. So it gets you in long. So you could have taken the short. But if you were long, you got stopped out for how many points? About 14. Let's just say, let's just do 15 points. So you got stopped out for 15. Comes back, gets you long. So it takes another 15 off of you. Um, I would have probably moved my stop up into here if I had to take a second stop and then we break out remember you could be short here and your stop here but unfortunately we're taking that hammer up and now we're breaking out so if you haven't gone long into here you could be using this band as the guarantee that the flag is no longer short so sometimes if I need to be convinced um, about like changing my bias this is going to be my short trigger because it's the bearish right that's where they're gonna be looking for it. But once it's game over for the bears and it's bull time, this is gonna be my long for the bulls and I'm gonna be looking to use that too. If I'm not using this as my long, these are gonna be my longs here. All right, so anyways, it breaks up. And what was the um, destination here? Just from um, classical doji entry, you're getting about 39 points. They give you 63, and you're looking for this gold zone to get tapped. And if you look, we almost hit um, the red one for about 85 points, but we end up hitting like somewhere in half of that. So not a bad trade, about 76 points. So you had how many alerts? One, let's just use one, two, and three. Three alerts, three opportunities. Um, to come and take a stab at the market. Uh, this one was good, like I said, but you did get stopped out. Still getting bought up. A lot of wicks down here. We ended up breaking out. What's cool is when we when we end up getting along and they end up stopping us out, they give you that data that we're just flagging here as well too. So you got in even earlier onto the breakout up, which isn't a bad trade. And it was a hammer from the low, so you know i should and we should all be thinking that um this is going to be end up turning bear from bearish to bullish pretty quick with that reversal setup so not bad that was um that day wednesday let's look at the next alerts hopefully we can run through these faster so here is thursday the 12th i'm asleep i'm asleep i'm asleep i'm asleep i'm asleep i'm asleep this is the doji that they give you a 15, and they also give you another doji alert at 1010. 
and we don't care about this one because it's already too late to be trading if it's 12 o'clock i'll give it it i'll give it its chance but if it's 12 28 uh -uh. anything anything already getting close to 30 I, it's, it's time to shut it all down so 345 the next day it's a big time frame but thursday was cpi so don't be um foolish to think it's not gonna be a good trade with high volatility all right so here's cpi we'll do the classical entry and where we're going here's the pts here is the bull flag because it was green on this candle so from high to low and then we'll play the next candle Ooh, that got killed <laughs> i think i murdered oh that's cool let's look at the classical because classical would have helped for sure because we didn't really touch much other than re to, like reject the upper band okay <laughs> damn he got murdered 815 what happened during that whole session of 815 so 815 they trigger us long and then we're stopped out using the classical triggered short stopped out triggered long stopped out triggered short now this is interesting because I tell people this all the time. You might get the clean break or you might not. Why? Because sometimes they might do a triangle right at these doji body entries. So if we look at it, what do we create? It is a triangle, but for a lot of other people, it's a broad information. Here. And... Uh, it'd probably be best to use this because that's where we kind of just came from. I'll put up the candle close because it gives us more tilt. If I do this one, it's going to be upwards. Or we could even do this one if you want to do lows. But anyways, it doesn't really matter to me because I don't really draw broad, inf broad informations myself anymore. So anyways, you could see though that we're failing all of the new highs. And we've only failed one low and it's a higher low. So because this is a higher low... This is kind of a triangle. See that? Made a higher lows, higher lows. Failing new highs. It's looking like this is a wedge and this wants to break. So that's why using the classical model, it gets rid of all the structure. Because some people just don't want to learn it. Some people don't want to use it. Some people don't care about it. So this is why I like to show the classical model. Because it takes away all of that if you don't really know. But unfortunately, sometimes you will take um stop losses so long that's one loss short at the second loss um long that's a third loss so you got stopped out three times and then it becomes the fourth time and ends up working <laughs> but you don't know typically i see it. it's either the third or fourth time fourth is typically it's going to be time and if fourth isn't working you're in a double doji it ain't gonna work no more but we end up getting the short and it ends up dropping off all the way to pt1 and we and like i said where am i convinced i want bulls to step up here for the premium you know so they can buy it right that's that's what i want but if not here is the bearish spot so this is where i might take my short and set my stop right here so if we did take that trade you're risking about 24 points it's a big range because it's been widened out but they end up giving you more because we end up breaking that. And for me, if we if these if we break these zones, these are still important for me because that yellow is on for grabs, that yellow is on for grabs. So even if I'm late to the game, I'm still looking somewhere close to like about right here for 112 points because this is where we break it. So this is the level of the event. So it's still a good trade, which is why I like I said, what's important to me on my levels is gonna get me into the next trade if I miss my execution. And maybe I don't want to play this. But anyways, we end up chopping around, creating that broadening, creating that upper wedge, and then ends up breaking. Um, from entry, though, that's like super crazy um, gains. Um, 92, 117, 
and then 143 because that, that was a big drop <laughs> one of our friends in juicy room made a very nice trade um that day on the sell-off here but that was that one the 345 but there was another one on the 230 so maybe that would have been better so if you didn't like this seller you stopped out let's go look at this 230 at 10 10. so you had two opportunities this one really sucked because the first session chopped out a lot really sucked let's look at 10 10 now Ooh, what a ooh, and it's a bear flag one too because this auction turned red here's the bear flag from swing hot low to swing high remember golden zone you break that daddy likey on the higher time frame or reject it because i'm gonna like it too so here's that and then here is the price targets now it's always good to have higher time frame liquidity on like um areas are pt1 and pt2 on the day because we might go to those because the higher time frame has enough time to elapse on the trade so let's look at the um price targets all right and let's go look at 1010 on the five minute on the fiver like michelle fiver all right here we go so 1010 immediately drop see how see the comparison this one was the fourth try what was this one the first try <laughs> and let's look at the stop loss if you did take this trade it was 14 points and we end up hitting pt1 36 67 and 94 and we broke the broadening here so this is going to be um cheap cheap bonus round once you break out of here and this thing while over 130 points mm, yeah pretty close 138 points um on that higher time frame so if you if you stayed watching this one uh, I, I try to tell people this if you get stopped out twice don't trade that doji no more you still can but um you're gonna want better confirmation on the trade and you can see here at 2.30, um, we end up um, having the better setup. So there are about two opportunities to try to make money on the market. This one, we don't care. Now let's go to Friday, which is the 13th, spooky Friday. We're asleep, we're asleep, we're asleep. You have one here, and then you have a secondary one, and you have the end of day one, which isn't bad either. Um, like I said, getting towards the later of the day, I'm kind of already exhausted. So you had two opportunities of 460, which is a super long time frame. So that one could be rough. And then you have one for the 120. Let's go see how the 460 performed at market open. And mind this, the 460, that's the whole entire day. So hopefully it goes right off the bat. And if it doesn't, then it is what it is. So here was the 460 on Friday. It's a bearish auction because it was red. So we're looking for the bear flag. So we'll set this up. And then here is the classical model. Okay, you can see you took a loss. And then now, uh, price targets. It's the whole day, so this is kind of where they're trying to take it for the whole day. So all these levels should be relevant for the rest of the day uh price targets number four all right five minute and we're looking at the 620. well 620 when the market opens um my time all right 620. you get triggered long stops you out you get triggered in the short sometimes if i get uncomfortable about how it, it's breaking out just for a footnote here. Um, actually, let me make this thicker so we could see what's going on, okay, with that um, bear flag. Remember I said that the bear flag, um, these upper channels are the premium, like where bears might step in. So if you look here, this is the bearish premium. Set your stop here. So if you look here, instead of using the classical model, um, this is just because we have the data here. Because the stop loss here is about 30 points from trigger long to um, the the red. So that's that'd be you'd be down 60 points in a day. So if you look here, they get you in the long, you get stopped out, 
if you're uncomfortable about the short, especially if you're at the bottom of that broadening, um, you could use the outside of this to get in so you don't have to risk that again. But if you did, you got stopped out for 30 points again. We push up, they don't give you the long. Remember I said, sometimes it could be the third or fourth try, okay? <laughs> could be the third or fourth try. End up stopping you out. Now you're in the short. No stop losses getting hit this third try. And we end up selling off. Pretty bad too. And from entry to first price target, 131 points. And then we end up giving you 169 points. And they bounce it back up. And then we fill the price target so you can go back again to PT2. Or if you think PT1 is going to get you to PT3, you can take that trade too. Because PT1 to PT3, that's going to be about another 68 points on the day, even a little bit lower. Not a bad trade. And like I said, if it's not the first or second time, it's going to be the third one. But do you want to risk the third for the fourth? You know, I can't be the judge of that. But if you are getting stopped out, um, think about it. Typically for me, if I'm getting stopped out, what's the structure? What's the issue? Let me draw my flags. Let me draw my broadenings because I want to use that data. But if we go back and just use the bear flag, these are the optimal entries. I'm trying to short here because I know where my stop goes. Because if I short here, it is a great entry. But what happens if this thing runs and breaks out and I don't have a stop loss? I'm going to be in trouble. And I have to tell myself that because I do do that sometimes. Sometimes I'll take it before it hits it. I'm like short here, boom. And then it pushes up higher. I'm like, shit. And then it ends up going back. That's why I don't have a stop loss. But once it starts going bigger and bigger, I have to cut it because I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. I should have had a, the 10 point stop on the bracket on. So that's why I'm waiting for this to break because then I can use the blue because it does it does sell off, sells off. Boom, comes right back up. So just using this, what would have been the type of trades we would have got into? 40 points. And then when it did it again and came back, it gave you another um, 31 points. So you can see these levels are working. It's just you have to be smart with your stop. That's why the classical is good for a lot of us who don't like to put in a lot of work. Because if it breaks up, I just want to know my stop loss. If it breaks down, I just want to know my stop loss. That should be more important than your price target. Where is my stop going? But this 460 was great. That was a really cool. Just took patience and being smart with your risk management. Now here's the 11. Here's the 11 AM doji at 120. Uh, 120 minute time frame. So two hour. Okay, let's look at that one. Sorry, it's just skewing the chart now. Really? Oh, oh, so even after the sell off, there was another doji. But this one sucked because it consolidated. Let me double check this one. 120 at 11 a.m. Yeah. So somehow this was a shooter. And I think I know why because the way it was skewed. Let me throw on the Gaussian curve. Interesting. Yeah, it must have been this line here. So that's why it took it detected as a shooter. But hey, it was an opportunity. It didn't go nowhere. But let's go look at the structure. It's a bear flag because this candle was bearish. So here's the optimal shorts. And then here is the classical model. I'm not even throwing the price targets because we didn't hit shit. Um, so here's that setup. And it goes off at, what, 11? So let's go look at the five minute tight range so yeah you're gonna need brackets on this one 11 o'clock right right at 11 they drop you short boom stopped out getting the long long liquidates gets you back in the short it goes down boom stops you out back in the long stopped out and now you're back in the short and then same thing again. So there's just a lot of, of whipsaw here. One good one, but you had to take profits. One good one, you had to take profits. And then none of these were sustainable until later. That's why I said, um, if you took two losses, just don't trade it. But I will say this. Let's just say this. This range is so tight. I guarantee you it's only like um, 0.5 of a stop loss. Oh, it's two points. Still not bad, but that's... 
that's super tight range. So it's gonna be very, very violent swings. It's just very, that's violent. So for me, if I'm gonna take these, I have a wider entry model, but um, I would probably just avoid taking it using the classical because nothing's gonna be good here um, being stopped out that short. So something to think about. So that was a little higher time frame alerts. And you can see here, this one's just broadening anyways. Look at this. Failing the highs. And also failing the lows. So if you wanted to use this to get into some of the trades there, use it. Because that's what's there. Like, don't get mad about it. Just know how to use the data um, with what you know. Um, <laughs> what we know to be true. The strat. <laughs> Here's that broadening. So here's that broadening information from this swing high to that failed swing high once the candle opened. But if the candle didn't open, all they really gave you um, was this here. Fails, gets bought up. It's, it's just rough. So this is going to get your rotation down. This is going to get your rotation up. New higher low up. So, ugh. But it was an opportunity if you missed. So if you missed that 460, um, they would give you that alert. I'm sure there was other lower time frames, but I just wanted to show you guys and go over um, anyone who's new or has questions. How do you do this? What is this? At least we went over the weekly review. And it seems like almost every day there was at least one opportunity um, to trade the market. The 92 was very popular of a time frame. The two hour was very popular. And the 115 was very popular for some time frames for the alerts um, last week. Alright guys, you guys have a good day and hopefully this was helpful. I'll upload it to YouTube and enjoy.